Now in the body we don't just want lots of water sloshing around all over the place. It has to be well organised and compartmentalised. So body fluids are compartmentalised. And we normally describe two major compartments where body water is stored. And the first is the intracellular compartment. The intracellular compartment is the fluid inside the cells. Now, obviously, this isn't one compartment. There's actually billions of cells in the body, but collectively they comprise one compartment and we call that the intracellular compartment. It contains the intracellular fluid. And if you're an average size sort of person, you might expect to have about 30 litres of that at any one time. 30 litres of water in all the billions of cells that comprise your body. So there's the intracellular fluid and the other main classification is the extracellular fluid. The extracellular fluid is fluid which is not in cells. It's outside of the cellular compartment. And extracellular fluid can be divided into two categories or two further compartments, if you like. And one of those is the intravascular compartment. Now, the intravascular compartment contains the blood. And if you, again, are of average size, you've probably got something like five, five and a half litres of blood at any one time. And if you've got about five litres of blood, you would expect three litres of that to be water. And the blood, of course, is found in the heart, the arteries, the arterioles, the capillaries, the venules and the veins. It is within the circulatory system. And collectively, we can describe this as the intravascular compartment. So intravascular fluid is in the intravascular compartment. That is, it is in the blood. But then there is extracellular fluid, which is not in the blood. This is in the interstitial spaces. Now, the tissue spaces or the interstitial spaces are the spaces between the cells that comprise the body tissues. So this space is not in the intravascular compartment, it's not in the blood vessels, it's not in the cells themselves, it's between the cells and between the cells and the blood vessels. And we call this the interstitial compartment. So tissue fluid is found in the interstitial compartment. And at any one time, you've probably got about 10 litres of water as tissue fluid. So just to summarise, body fluid can be intracellular or extracellular. Extracellular fluid can be in the intravascular compartment in the blood or in the interstitial compartment as tissue fluid. Now, in clinical practice, we often talk about third spacing of fluid. What do we mean by this? Well, third spacing describes fluid which is not in the cells. It's not intracellular. And it's not in the blood, it's not intravascular, and it's not in the tissue fluid, it's not interstitial. It's in a third space. So at any one time, you're probably going to have a bit of urine in your bladder. There's probably going to be some water in the bile, in your gallbladder and biliary system. At any one time, you've probably got something like 150 mils of cerebrospinal fluid. And there's also going to be small amounts of serous fluid between the visceral and parietal pleural membrane and between the visceral and parietal peritoneal membrane. So there's small amounts of fluid in other places as well. And we sometimes call these the third space fluids. But this is particularly important in pathological situations and in trauma situations because very often these third space fluids are in potential spaces. So for example between the visceral and parietal pleural membrane there is a potential space. Physiologically there shouldn't be a space, the two membranes should be sucked together, but in trauma you can bleed into that space with a haemothorax. Or in some pathological situations you can get exudates accumulating in that space, a hydrothorax. And much the same is true in the peritoneal cavity. You can get bleeding from a ruptured liver or a ruptured spleen that accumulates in the peritoneal sac, converting the space between the visceral and the parietal peritoneal membrane from a potential space into an actual space. Or in peritonitis, there can be the accumulation of pathological volumes of fluid in that potential space. When these fluids accumulate, we call that third spacing. And very often you can't see that from the outside. You have to gauge its presence 
by looking for clinical features and by carrying out investigations. And the important thing with fluids in third spaces is when a fluid is in the third space, obviously it's no longer able to circulate in the blood. It's no longer able to occupy the interstitial space to facilitate the diffusion of oxygen from the blood to the tissue cells. So basically, pathological fluid accumulating in third spaces is not doing any good and it's depriving the normal physiological systems of the body of the fluid that is essential for sustaining life-giving physiology. So that's why third spacing of fluids is important.